What's going on, everybody? So, uh, yesterday, a lot of prep work for the Louisville sports card show that happened up in Louisville, hosted by J and J All Star. Really great guy. Um, you know, he's been trying to get me to set up at his shows, and always asking me an offer, and I should say to set up. And I finally was able to take him up on the offer onto it. Had to catch up on a lot of work over the last two weeks, uh, plus prep for the show, get everything ready. Went there. No, I did not have camera issues. Um, I, I did the tables were the thick plastic ones, so my grip wouldn't hold on to it. But I, I pretty much rigged it up to where it was on the other chair looking over. But disappointment as it may be, there was just nothing worth videotaping up there at all. Um, to be honest, I mean, there were other shows going on in the area. So when I state this, there was one going on in Missouri a lot of people went to. Some people shot to West Virginia for a show. Um, we had a Dallas show, which a lot of people probably flew in down there to go to the Dallas show, too. So I would probably say they were about a third capacity with dealer tables. To the left of me was three blank tables. There was nobody to my right, event, but some guy moved to try to space himself out. So there was like two tables, then him next to me. Then I had a gentleman behind me, and that was pretty much, you know, my talking buddy for the whole day. Because there was some traffic came through. Um, and I'm going to use this more as what I think is going on with the sports card industry more than, you know, showing anything to show because I didn't do anything there. Literally, I sold a total of five cards. I didn't bring no value Ben boxes. And from when I talked to other dealers there, the guys who were giving bulk deals and value boxes made pretty decent money. Um... Anybody else who was just showcases there see the big decline in what they normally get at shows? Now, I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there talking about, oh, the decline, we're in a crash and all that. I'm going to cover that in a separate video, so I'm going to stay away from that part of the whole aspect right now. I think with this show, because the last two or three shows, it's been packed. I think... The location's fine. I think the timing of the event with the other shows, um, especially with Dallas going on, the one in St. Louis, so people didn't either come down to set up. We also have had COVID spike in the area, so that could be another reason, too. Um, th there's a lot that all play into whenever a show doesn't you know, get maximum participation of what you would like there. Uh, four of the cards I sold totaled 210. And the one card I did sell was a gentleman. We've been working this deal, and I'll tell you what, I bet you it's been four or five months. But every time I was set up at a show he would show up at, I'd have to leave early. And he would always want to come back around. I'm pad to pack up, get back. You all know Pug had to get taken care of, stuff like that there. Or I may have even had to be UPS store, pick a PSA order up because, hey, who wants it to sit in there till Monday, you know? I can pick it up Saturday and look and gawk at my cards and make a video. So, I did sell the Big Ben. Um, Rookie Auto, the one I had double of, that top signature series out of 299 PSA 10, which made my show for me. So, if it wasn't for that one sale, I mean, it would have been a very, very, very bad show because... As I've talked about in previous videos, for me, the only cost I had was a table and my gas there and back. One thing I can say I've noted, and I'm going to do something different out of the next... Uh, I have four shows in five weeks. There's only one week I'm not setting up, which is June 4th. I want to pick up trends, and I took notes on to this show to see if these trends stay setting. Just stuff for my own knowledge, and I'll share it out there with what I see. But what I put down for this show was, you know, basically that the other events in the areas and going on around, the, you know, sports card industry and the community itself did play a big factor along with COVID because our numbers did spike out this way. Um, the other part that I noticed was people were not buying a lot of the bigger cards a lot of the bigger cards, uh, we'll say some dealers, again, very overpriced. They're in it for too much. Same story, different freaking show or different day. The guys that were good on priced that I talked to, uh, most of them agree that people are wanting to buy this stuff at 70 80% comps. 
which don't make sense from a dealer standpoint because I could put this on eBay and just lose the 12.9%. Why would I get rid of it for less? Well, from a seller aspect, their whole thing is it's cash. Well, if you're a legit dealer with licensing, you still have to pay sales tax, whether it's monthly, quarterly, yearly with your state or the state you're set up in. So if I'm figuring that in my price when I sell it, I think that's pretty good. At the same time frame, you're getting the price at or slightly with me below the eBay comp, not paying sales tax and not paying your um, uh, shipping on to it. So I can understand going lower on cards that have been sitting for a while of high populations, your base Lucas, you know, base... Zions, base Herberts, base Wanders, base Akunas. I got all that. But when you got autographs, numbered stuff, low pop stuff, why would you settle for less than you could get anywhere else is my whole thing onto it. If you're going to be in a dealer mentality, you got to be into that. I think that the age of quick flips are going to be far and few in between anymore. Um, as the market settles, some people, you know, drastically are probably in different parts of uh, denial of buying their stuff at very, very high prices, and now they're not going to get that money back. Eventually, they'll get in a mode where they're just going to get angry and get out because, hey, maybe their wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, somebody threatens to leave them. I don't know. And they take a huge loss on They have a sour taste, never come back into the hobby. Sorry, guys, I had to get some water. My throat was getting dry there. But um, you're still going to have your hobby people out there and everything. They're still going to buy. I did see a lot of vintage being sold um, for set building and stuff while I was at this show. Uh, my one buddy, his brother's uncle, he deals with a lot of high-end vintage. And he was set up on the other side. He came by to see me, and we were talking. At that time frame, we both had two sales. I think the show was open for about two and a half hours. At that time frame, which was really odd. Um, a lot of seller or sellers, buyers, I should say, out there are looking at getting stuff dirt cheap. Understandable. You always got to look for deals out there. Maximize inventory. Maximize your how much you got into a, into a card or a box, you know, to set yourself up to make a little bit of, I call it scratch on the side and stuff like that there. And I know a lot of people are focusing on the big number and returns, but again, I never look at the big number. I look at the year to date. And that's where I've always set at. And I don't really start looking at year to date till my first quarter's done. You're always going to have ups and downs on to it. But I think as more shows are produced because people think, hey, I can make money selling tables to people to set up. I think you're gonna if they're fighting and you know within two two and a half hour drive, the person's gonna go to whichever one's the sh is the closest, and they think they can maximize whatever they're doing that day, whether they're buying or selling, which is completely understandable. Uh, so this next week I'm gonna be in Lexington set up, and we're gonna do a little piece onto that. Um, and there's also a show going on in Nashville. Nashville's a lot bigger than Lexington, so we're going to see how that goes. And that's Memorial Day weekend to take in consideration. Where I live at, a lot of people don't set out for vacationing until that Sunday because they'll take that whole week off from work, you know, Tuesday through Friday, and they'll go somewhere. Usually Saturdays, you know, getting ready to go if they're going anywhere or possibly get people coming into town. So it could be a really good show. The following week, I'm not going to be set up. I'm going to go to Salem again. We'll do a little video up there. I talked with the guy. He came by and said he's going to have the table spaced out a little bit better up there. And I do appreciate that. Um, it was just packed. You couldn't move around at all in there. And a real nice guy up in there. Um, I almost asked him to be at an extra table set up. But I wanted to have a break in between each week. Uh, going two weeks and a week off. Two weeks strong again. Following week, same show in Louisville. Be at that. And then the following week, we'll be back in Newburgh, Indiana. And that's after that time frame. I'm going to do like a final video with this stuff onto it. Again, I do apologize if you guys thought there was going to be a lot of videos of this. I didn't buy anything. There wasn't a whole lot of selling going on. A lot of the stuff, like I said, was just talk between me and dealers. And most me, me going to the dealers to talk out there onto it. 
Because I'm just, you know, you always want to see what the current trends are. If you could figure something out to improve yourself as a seller. Um, what people are buying, how they're buying, stuff like that out there. I can't speak bad about the card show at all. Because um, you could have three, four successful months and something, you know, a show doesn't turn out right. It's going to happen up there. Yeah, I can never base my thoughts off of one show except for that Richmond show because <laughs> I actually spoke to the other dealers that are never coming back to that show because of how it's been recently there and that kind of turned me off on that but as far as this one I, I still think it with the potential and everything there it's just the timing of it is what probably really drew to where we were at onto it overall I mean a uh, lot of different selections were there. You had some vintage people. You had people just selling lots. You had people doing grading cards. You had, uh, of course, all your stuff. You pull out retail boxes. There was a lot of retail wax out there. Um, but like I said, a lot of people looking to get that like 20 to 50% off. We're going to use the eBay comp monster. And to me, it just doesn't make sense unless it's something that's highly populated out there that... It's plentiful everywhere. And I'll just take the cash, get rid of it now, less of a hassle on eBay. Because why would I sell a $300 card that's going on eBay for two and a quarter, two forty, even even two fifty, when I know I'm probably realistically going to clear, we'll just say twenty six bucks out two seventy four. In the long run, if you do that. You'd cut yourself short on eBay revenue, which could add up, you know, over the course of the year, thousands of dollars. If it's just one or two here and there, I don't see a problem with it. But if you get into that routine rhythm, you, you could hurt yourself overall, especially if you're a business out there um, trying to do anything. But again, show show was not bad at all. It, I think that you know, overall, the previous shows that were there did very very well. It was just. That one show that I just said I just set up at first time with them, you know, is kind of a bummer show. But you're gonna have those out there. Not every show you're gonna go to is gonna be like wow, and you know, light bulbs gonna go off. You're gonna see stars and like oh my goodness, there's all this stuff out here and stuff like that. You know, it, it happens across the board. But I have nothing to show that I bought out there. I did have a nice eBay pickup this morning. So hopefully it'll be in by the end of the week. I'll show you guys that. Um, somebody had something posted with a bad picture. Uh, and I'll explain that video too on to it. But other than that guys. Just uh, wanted to touch real quick on some of the stuff that I see at the show. Um, a lot of people of course asking for Luca, Herbert, Burrow. I see people going to chasing the playoff teams right now in NBA. I've seen people, baseball's all over the place, really. Uh, I can be honest with that. But football, people are trying to start chasing uh, all those quarterbacks right now. And then eventually, once we start getting into mid-level and high-level uh, NFL rookies this year, I'm sure we'll have a lot of chases there again. All right, everybody. Take care. Appreciate you listening to me just talking on this video, not really showing anything. And I will be back with some more videos this week. Take care.